Yeah. yeah. I move like this, I'll never be regular. I got the motion of routes in the schedule. What I've been through, you can never be ready for. Talking about juice, I'm just pop with the metaphor. Look in the mirror, I'm looking at me. The price of life cheap, I ain't paying a fee. Nigga, no digital, paying for reach. Long as I'm free, I'll be straight as a crease. I move like this, I'll never be regular. I got the motion of routes in the schedule. What I've been through, you can never be ready for. Talking about juice, I'm just pop with the metaphor. Look in the mirror, I'm looking at me. The price of life cheap, I ain't paying a fee. Nigga, no digital, paying for reach. Long as I'm free, I'll be straight as a crease. Been through some shit, so I I really don't talk about no regular gossip at all. Oh. And the vibe is just effortless. Come with some benefits. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we back in full effect. Real talk, episode two. Elevate your consciousness. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? I hope everybody is well. It's the one and only, man. It's your boy, Travis Lamar, back on the ones and twos, you know. And uh, we're here for another episode of, of Real Talk TV. And, uh, you know, today we'll be talking about elevating consciousness. And I didn't even, to be honest, I didn't even look up the definition for consciousness, you know, what the people say it is. To me, consciousness is pretty simple. It's, uh, it's knowledge of self. It's knowledge of history. It's knowing who you are. It's knowing where you come from and, and it's applying that that information that you have to lead to a better life. So we're here, we're in full effect. Uh, before we get started, I just want to set some ground rules real quick. Like, you know, uh, the views that are represented on Real Talk TV only belong to Travis Lamont. These are solely my views. You, you feel me? And uh, I'm asking you, the listener, to, to just listen with an open mind. I'm not asking you to believe me. I'm not asking you to accept what I, what I say. I'm not asking you to take my word for it. I always want you to do your own research. I always want you to think for yourself. That's the whole point of consciousness, of you being the thinker for yourself, like you making the decisions, not allowing other people to make the decisions for you. So that's, that's a little disclaimer. Like I'm gonna say some things some things that are not mainstream traditionalist thinking. And just to give you some more background, the, the people that I study are, you know, scholars that, that are, you know, focused on the African community, the Afro community, Afrocentric curriculum. People like uh, Dr. John Henry Clark, people like Dr. Amos Wilson, people like Anthony Browder, people like David Banner, uh, Dr. Umar Johnson, Tariq Nasheed, you know, these are the type of people that I study. When we're talking about historical, you know, greats, we're talking about El Hajj, Malik El Shabazz, better known as Malcolm X. You know, he, he's, he's everything to me. We're talking about Harry Tubman. We're talking about Ida B. Wells. We're talking about Asada Shakur. Like, like these are my mentors. Dr. Khaled Muhammad. <laughs> Dr. Khaled Muhammad, oh my gosh. You know, uh, Thomas Sankara. These are the people that, that I study, the life of, of Nat Turner, of Denmark Vesey, of September Clark. Like, I can go on and on. I'm just trying to give you like a foundation of where I get my study from. These are the people that I, I listen to. These are the people that impact my thinking. And so I'll just be kind of regurgitating you know, what I learned from them and what I learned from, from my own experiences. Being a black conscious man in America. So we're gonna get right to it. Uh, we're gonna talk about three kind of subtopics today and then I'm gonna move right on out the way. <laughs> All right, so I just wanna talk about, you know, mindset, making decisions for yourself, thinking for yourself and having knowledge of self and knowledge of history that will allow you to think for yourself. So we're gonna start case in point with the one dollar bill. Now, in today's society, you know, it's technology driven. Everybody got Cash App and PayPal and Zelle and debit cards and credit cards and all these kind of stuff. So you might not have a one dollar bill on you, but if you do, I want you to take that one dollar bill out. And I want you to turn around, I want you to turn it around and look at the back of that dollar bill. If you don't have a dollar bill, uh, you can Google it or we're gonna try to bring it up on screen. Uh, and I just wanna show you kinda 
some things that may that may you know get your get your wheels turning in your brain a little bit. So on this dollar bill, we're gonna start on the left hand side. On this one dollar bill, you see a pyramid, and you see an eye on top of that pyramid. Now, the pyramid is indigenous to Africa. The eye on top of the pyramid symbolizes the eye of Heru. We're gonna talk about Heru in a little bit, just remember that. So you would have to, you know, one would ask yourself, why in an American dollar is an African pyramid on here? You gotta keep in mind, give you a little context, the dollar bill, you know, it represents America, its ideals, its principles, like the dollar bill is it, like this is, we America, this is the foundation of America. And you got an African pyramid on there. And then you look to the right, you see the bald eagle, right? You see the bald eagle. Now here's what here's where things get interesting. The number 13. The number 13. When I think about the number 13, I think about unlucky. I think about Friday the 13th. I don't know what you think about, but that's kind of what I think about. That's what kind of in my opinion is the portrayal of 13, like it's like a negative number. But in African history, 13 is a number of significance. It's one of the most powerful numbers, actually. 13 is the number of transformation. 13 is the number uh, that represents rebirth, that represents spirituality and taking it to the next plane of existence. Transcending, that's what 13 represents in African history. You feel me? It's an African, you know, theology, the number 13. Predates America thousands of years. So you're looking at this bald eagle on the dollar bill, and one of the bald eagle's talons, there are 13 olive branches that represent peace. There are 13 arrows that represent war. The, the bald eagle is facing the peace because it says... That symbolizes that the America prefers peace. I'll let y'all do that, y'all will. Um, the shield on the eagle has 13 bars. Um, what am I forgetting? If there are some stars on there, there's going to be 13 of them. <laughs> you see you see what I'm trying to get at? And you see the number 13 in America in general. Pete. When, when, you know, the Europeans finally came to America and settled, them boy fresh on the scene, them boy in America, you know, everything popping. They just starting, this this is it, this is the beginning. How many colonies started this, this country? <laughs> they could have picked any number to represent the founding colonies in this country, but what number did they pick? They picked the number 13. They picked the number 13. You have 12 members of a jury plus one judge. That's the number 13. <laughs> Jesus Christ plus 12 disciples. What is that, y'all? That's the number 13. There are 12 zodiac signs plus the sun. That's the number 13. King Arthur had 12 knights at his round table. What number is that, you guys? Anybody be taking the test? What number is that? <laughs> so the number 13 shows up over and over and over again. And in, in, in the in the crush in the crutch of American society. Um, so that's that's just something you gotta I just want you to think about. That's all. Just think about it. Like, yo, what's up, what's up with that? So you, so you use propaganda to make us think, the masses, that 13 is an unlucky number, an evil number, a negative number, but secretly, you have founded your country on this number. Interesting. That bald eagle that's on the back of the dollar bill, it, it actually looks exactly like a falcon, right? Hopefully you bring this up on the screen right now. What does, what does, that, what does that falcon represent, you ask? That falcon is the symbol of Heru. I told you we were gonna come back to Heru. Heru, remember, is also the symbol on top of the pyramid. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Who is Heru? Everybody wanna know now, who is Heru? Who is Heru? Heru is a African comedic 
deity that our African people looked up to. Okay? Heru is what they call the sun god or Ra. The eye of Heru symbolizes the sun. Okay? It's very symbolic. You, you, what you have to understand is that symbols determine your, your mindset. Like... Like you are wired by, you know, things like symbols, things like trauma, those things kind of wire you. We'll go deeper into that in the future. But yeah, the story of Heru. Heru is the son of Osiris and Isis, okay? Osiris was killed by his brother Set, was killed. Isis had magical powers, brought Osiris back to life. The only thing that she didn't have was his phallus, his penis, that was said to be eaten in the Nile River by a crocodile or a crab or a catfish, one of those things. So she used her magic powers to bring Osiris back to life. They, they magically and supernaturally gave birth to Horus, Heru, I'm sorry, Horus is the Greek name, to Heru, and Heru grew into age and then killed Set defeated Set. Set is Osiris and Isis' brother, right? So this immaculate conception happened. Heru became the victor. He became the hero. Now he's the sun god. All is well. That story reminds you of something? Heru is also known as the morning star. <laughs> Does that story remind you of something? I'm just, I just want you to to think now this this ancient comedic African story predates the Bible by five thousand years or so. You know, it's documented by, you know, the archaeologists, the researchers, the people who do that stuff. So um I just want you I just want you to think about that. That's that's the story of, of Heru in a nutshell. And and like I tell you, please go and do your research if you're interested in these things. Go study them yourself. Don't take my word for it and come up with your own conclusions. And and before I go out of here, I just want to make one more, you know, point that I want to bring to your mind. Um, the map, the world map that we follow right now is called the Mercator map. I may be pronouncing it wrong. I apologize. It's, it's just, you know, I'm just learning all this stuff. Uh, and it was made in like 1569 by European navigators. That's the map that we, the world map with all the countries on there. That's what we use now. In 1974, the Peter's projection map came out. We're going to put this on the screen, hopefully. I want you to just look at those two maps. One map was made in 1569 by European navigators when, when, they, just, when they just start traveling. I mean, that's not long after Christopher Columbus founded America. <laughs> um, so you got to keep in mind, like, that's a, that, that's a baby map. And then you got a map come out in 1974 that looked way different. That looked way different. You got to think about that. Think about this too, right before I go. We got North America. We got South America. Why don't we have East Asia and West Asia? Because at the end of the day, Europe would is just West Asia. Like Europe has turned itself into a continent when the old definition used to say a continent is a, a body of mass, a large body of mass surrounded by water. Europe is neither large nor surrounded by water. <laughs> I'm gonna let y'all go. I'm gonna let y'all go. Listen, this was episode two, Elevate Your Consciousness. You know, Real Talk TV, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you turn on the notifications, baby, because we going up. I'm just here to present information. I don't want no static. I don't want no problems. I'm just here to present information. Please do it as you will. Holler at me. I'll talk to you soon. I love y'all, and, and I'm giving everything back to my community. All right? Namaste. Ashe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, fam? I am Dawn Boren. Mom, STEM advocate, and author of Stories of the Gullah Geechee Children. I'm from Ridgeville, South Carolina, and although I've traveled many places, this anointed soul in the low country is something that I just cannot get enough of. It has taught me to appreciate the struggles of our ancestors. 
and not to only thank them, but to be conscious of their contributions, conscious of my responsibilities to them, and conscious of the current state of my people. Therefore, today, I will be reading the final thoughts from Real Talk TV Episode 2, Elevate Your Consciousness. Final Thoughts If the United States of America was built off African principles and philosophy, if this country was literally built by African people, then why are the Africans in this country treated the worst? Stay safe and remember, elevate your consciousness. Thank you.